Hey, this is Ehab. In this video, I am going to talk about render passes or AOVs. I'll start the video by adding the render passes that I want. Then I'll check them inside the Maya renderer. Save the EXR file. Import the EXR file into After Effects. And upon adding the extractor effect, I will duplicate the layer that has the extractor effect as many times as the AOVs that I want. Then I'm gonna use the appropriate blending mode. Render passes allow flexibility in post-production, but they also allow artistic liberty. I'll demonstrate. And lastly, we want to keep in mind that the EXR images are ideally rendered out as 32 bits, which has an insanely higher amount of data that the 8 bit that is set by default in After Effects wouldn't show us. For that reason, it would be ideal to experiment and change from 8 bits to 32 bits to make sure that we are actually getting the best result that we are actually making. I have this Maya scene and this is my current render. You'll notice that on this tab here I have all of these render passes. In Arnold there is this feature that's called 3D manipulation. If it's active that means I can navigate in. If that feature is activated that means I can navigate inside the renderer as if I'm navigating in the interface. So I'll make sure it's off. This way when I zoom in it's not going to re-render. So take a look at your renders. You can even change the exposure if you want to, just to have an idea of what they look like. You can always uh, click this button to reset it. In some cases, there could be some passes that you just kind of render them just to experiment and see if there's any results out of it. In some cases, they might have nothing. Uh, so I would encourage you, it's, it's really easy to add passes, and I would encourage you to add as many as you feel like you want to experiment with. So how do we create these passes? Where do they come from? If you go to the render settings, there's a tab for AOVs, and here is where those are located. So pretty much you find the one that you like, and you can just either double click, or use this arrow here. If there's anyone that you don't like, for instance, if I go here and I realize that the diffuse indirect doesn't have anything, I can just go here to the diffuse indirect, remove it. If there's anything that you would like to add, you can just select and throw it in there. Uh, generally speaking, all those layers should be as they are, but for something like the AO, there are instances where in the AO you get colors, even though it's supposed to show you only grayscale. So in some cases, if you had colors that are ruining the result of your AO, just go back into the AOV tab and change this RGBA to float. And this should solve that issue. I don't have that issue in here, but I figured I would mention it while at it. And lastly, speaking about the AO, by default, Arnold doesn't provide you with AO. You will not find AO in here. How did I create my AO? For that, I have a tutorial for it, and I'm going to include it in the link in my video. OK, so now that I'm happy with this result, I'm going to go to File, Save, Multilayer EXR. So how do I edit an EXR footage in After Effects? Right mouse button, Import, or double click. And then I would import the XR image, drag and drop. Then I'm going to go to the effects, extractor. You will notice instantly that there is a change, and that's because of the change in gamma correction. So I'm going to take this image, and I'm going to call this beauty. I'm going to duplicate it, name it AO. Duplicate, Specular, Duplicate, Coat. So for now, I'm only going to take these out and fiddle with them to show some results of modifying the results and playing around with the blending mode. So next, I'm going to hide these and just show the beauty. And I'm going to delete the extractor. So this is just for me as a reference, as a visual reference of what the result should look like generally. 
and I'm going to hide it. I'm going to go here, AO, and we're going to change from this tab, click on AO. So that's my ambient occlusion. Hide and show this, specular. And if I'm interested, I can make another layer for direct and indirect specular. But for me, in this example here, the specular should be good. And then here is my coat. And then coat. I'll duplicate. Create direct. So I'm going to call this direct. And then I'm going to duplicate it and name this indirect. You'll notice some sort of data in here. So all of that can be modified and changed if I want to. So I'm going to go and put the AO on top because AO is always on top, but I'm not going to activate it yet. I'm going to activate the direct and put it at the bottom. Use this as my base image. Now, if I go into the specular, You'll notice that it's taking over the image below it. So the specular is kind of overwhelming the direct. So what I need to do is to go and change the blending modes to add with add. I'm getting the combination of both the direct and the specular. I'm going to do the same with the coat. Activate the coat. You'll notice that it's pretty much dominating because there are no blending modes. So it's just going to be on top of them, blocking them. So the same process, I will go and change the blending mode into add. So let's see what the add has added to this scene. OK. Looks OK so far. Now here's the indirect. It has little addition to the scene, right? But all of those little additions, they accumulatively and collectively create, first of all, a nicer look. Second of all, it would give me more potential for editing. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So I'm going to go and click on Add. So this is the indirect. You can see that it has some subtle difference here. Still good to have. And lastly, I have the AO. And unlike the rest, AO has to go with multiply. Now you'll notice here that the details have become richer, but also darker. You can literally just take one of those passes that you really like, let's say the coat, and duplicate it. Notice how you get double the effect of that coat. Keep in mind that this is not an accurate way, or it's against the standard maybe. So make sure when you make these decisions, if you're working with a team, that you're confirming that this is OK. In the meantime, you could also go and add levels to that extra coat. And notice how big the difference could be. Again, this is just one render pass. And just go and change you the You can just choose anyone to. that you like. For instance, the specular and go to give it fill. Notice the big difference that happens. And if you want, you can just go to the opacity, click T on the keyboard, and just tone it down. You can even animate that opacity if you want to. The same thing that I've done before, you can just actually duplicate that specular. <coughs>
And on this one, I can just go and delete the effect that I created for the fill. This way I would just have the standard specular and on top of it, I have one that is reddish. I'll show you a more interesting example than the fill. I'll delete the fill and I'll go and choose Colorama. I can choose different color cycles. I can reset. I can go and create exposure as an added effect. And I can change the exposure intensity that I have. So yeah, that is by just modifying one of the render passes. So with that in mind, we want to start, like I mentioned, I'm just going to delete this. And I'm just going to go to highlight the structure of the build up here. We start by having the base which in many cases would be the diffuse, but in this case, because all of the materials have reflectivity, then the diffuse wouldn't be ideal. So I started with the direct, and then I would have all the other ones that I like. And keep in mind that what we're doing here is art. So as long as we have something visual that is appealing, then there's nothing necessarily wrong or right. It's a matter of taste. It's a matter of making it work for what we're doing. I also want to highlight something that is very important that oftentimes when we are playing around with the render passes, we notice things that would be really interesting to play with, really interesting results that we haven't necessarily thought about. Even in the 3D, we don't really see it. To give you an example, for instance, we I talked about the how the indirect is very, very minimal right? Let's see how much I can do with that, even though it felt almost pointless to have it. I'm going to duplicate it so I get twice the effect. I'm going to uh, take the exposure and apply it to the one that is currently the base indirect. I'm going to bump up the exposure. has a nice shine to it. And lastly, I want to talk about the difference in the bit depth. So let's say I have the indirect, very subtle. I'll just go and add colorama. Because of the way the indirect is structured, focusing on these areas, you'll notice that it has some really unique kind of look to it. So I'm going to go and change the intensity on it or the exposure these variations of colors are happening because of the colorama it has this kind of like rainbow kind of feel by default and the last thing i want to do is to go here in the main project area and go into the bit depth and change that to 32 bit what's going to happen now is that we're going to see the actual effects that we are applying to these exr images and what I mean by that is that currently we were working on the 8-bit. So going to the 32-bit, which is the amount of data that the XR images have, then we'll get to see if there is any changes. And you can see that there's a minor change in the uh, coloration and saturation that I am working on. But in many cases, there could be some changes that we don't necessarily see unless we actually turn on the 8 bits. So just keep that in mind.